Welcome everyone to what can be considered part two of integrating the OpenAI API in vanilla JavaScript. In the previous video, we covered the basic integration steps to generate chat completions using the OpenAI API. We built a UI to accept a prompt from the user, made a post request to the chat completion endpoint using that prompt, and updated the UI with the received completion. However, we acknowledge that the completion process takes some time and does not provide real-time streaming like ChatGPT. In this video, I will address these limitations by showing you how to stream OpenAI completions in real-time. We will also cover the implementation of the stop button functionality to cancel an ongoing completion. If you haven't watched the previous video yet, I highly recommend doing so before continuing. Now, as of this recording, there is no easy way to stream the chat completion and a significant amount of code is required to achieve real-time completions. But don't worry. I will break down the implementation process into digestible chunks even for a complete beginner. Now, the first step is to enable the stream option. In our generate function, within our fetch request, within body, after messages, set stream to true. Our app will now receive a stream of partial messages similar to ChatGPT. The second step is to read the stream of partial messages. Now there are a couple of steps involved, so let me break it down further. For step 2.1, remove the JSON conversion and the result text updation line, as that will not work anymore. Instead, we write const reader is equal to response dot body dot get reader. This line initializes an object named reader to read data from the response body in a streaming fashion. Step 2.2, use a while loop to iterate over the values in the stream. While true, curly braces. We need a loop that continuously reads data from the stream until it has been completely read. Hence, true within parentheses. For the while loop body, const chunk is equal to await Reader dot read. We invoke the read method on the reader object to read the next chunk of data in the stream. From chunk, we can extract two properties, done and value. If done property is set to true, the stream has been fully read and there is no more data to read we break out of the while loop. However, if done is false, the loop continues. We log the current value being read from the stream to the console. This process continues until the stream is fully read and the loop is broken. Let's save the file and visualize what a chunk of value looks like. With the console open, Enter the prompt, three word sentence. In the console, we can see the stream of values as binary data. Our next task is to decode this binary data. For step 2.3, initialize a text decoder object with UTF 8 encoding. Right before the while loop, const decoder is equal to new text decoder and we pass in UTF-8 as an argument. The text decoder API will help us decode binary data. After the if block, const decoded chunk is equal to decoder.decode and we pass in value. Let's now update the log statement to log decoded chunk to the console. 
head back to the browser, enter the same prompt, three word sentence, and press enter. We see the decoded stream of values. Each decoded chunk can contain one or more lines. The first chunk has two lines, the second chunk has one line, and so on. So for step 2.4, let's split these string values into an array and let's split it on the new line character. Const lines is equal to decoded chunk dot split and we split on slash n, which is new line. Let's log lines to the console and see what it contains. Same prompt, three word sentence, generate, and we can now see an array of strings. In each array, there are a few objects buried that we need to get hold of, but they all start with data, colon, space, which makes it difficult for parsing. So for step 2.5, let's remove this substring const parsed lines is equal to lines.map since lines is an array and for each line we replace data colon space with an empty string. While we're at it, let's also remove white spaces from both ends of the string dot trim. Let's log the updated array to the console. Go back to the browser. Enter the same prompt, three word sentence, and generate. We now see the object string without the data colon empty space, making it much easier to parse it as an object. Before we try parse though, we need to handle two more cases. It appears that each array contains additional strings. There are empty strings which have no significance, and in the last chunk, there is a line with the string done within square brackets. The string is an indication of the end of the stream and does not help us with the UI content. So, for step 2.6, let's filter out empty strings and the done string. We're going to chain dot filter. And once again, for each line, we're going to keep it only if it is not equal to an empty string. And the line is not equal to done within square brackets. We will now be left with stringified objects, which we can parse using json.parse. So for step 2.7, chain the map method. For each line, call json.parse, passing in the filtered line. Let's head back to the browser and see what we have. Three word sentence, enter, and we now see objects in the console. If I expand the first object, we have a property called choices, which is an array. At zeroth index, we have a key called delta, but this has a role of assistant. Let's proceed to the object at index one. We have choices again, which is an array. At zeroth position, we have delta property, and this in turn has content. The string is i which is the first word in our sentence. If I were to expand another, choices, zero, delta, content, we have am. Similarly, the parse line, choices of zero, delta dot content has here. I am here is our sentence. Now it is worth noting, Delta dot content 
can be undefined or an empty string, in which case we don't render that to the UI. Here's an example where delta is an empty object. For step 2.8, we iterate over the array of parsed lines and access the content if present. So for const parsed line of parsed lines, first we extract a property called choices from the parsed line. From choices at position 0, we extract a property called delta. From delta, we extract content. And if content is present, let's log it to the console. Let's remove the other console.log statement. Let's save the file and take a look at the console one last time. Three word sentence, press enter, and we see I am here with a full stop. We have the stream of values in a format that we can bind to the user interface. For step three, let's do just that. Let's update the UI with the parsed sequence of values from the stream. Before the while loop, reset the result text. Inner text is equal to an empty string. And when we have content that is not empty, bind it to the result inner text plus is equal to content. Let's head back to the browser and test this out. Enter the prompt as 20 word sentence. And we see the result streaming in just like ChatGPT. Hopefully the visualization of the log statements after every statement in the while loop has helped you understand this better. All right, for the final part of integrating OpenAI in vanilla JavaScript, let's implement the stop button handler. Now you may ask, why stop? Well, to avoid incurring unnecessary expenses, it's important to have the ability to stop generations in the middle of a completion. And that can easily be achieved by using an abort controller. You can read more about abort controller from the MDN docs but let's see how to use it in our AI Assistant app. Begin by creating a variable to store the abort controller instance. So right before the generate function, let controller is equal to null. Next, within the generate function, before making the fetch request, enable the stop button. So stop button dot Disable is equal to false. You can see in the HTML, the stop button is disabled to begin with. We enable it when the generation is in progress. Next, create an instance of abort controller. Controller is equal to new abort controller. And on the controller instance, we access the signal property that returns an abort signal object instance. With the signal, we can communicate with a fetch request. On the defined fetch request, after the body option, we set signal to our signal object instance. Of course, with ES2015, we can use the shorthand syntax and specify just signal. All right, now we have a way to stop the fetch request. Let's handle the stop button click event and assign a stop function that will stop the ongoing request. So at the bottom, stop button dot add event listener on the click event, let's call a function called stop. Now let's define the stop function. It's an arrow function. And if controller is not null, we call controller.abort. We then set controller is equal to null. 
This will stop the ongoing request. For the final step in this video, let's update the UI to reflect this stopping of a completion. When we call controller.abort, the execution enters the catch block. Since we triggered this, we can handle it by displaying a meaningful message in the UI. So within the catch block, if signal dot aborted, we can update result text dot inner text to request aborted. Else, we update the text to error occurred while generating. In the finally block, let's disable the stop button and reset the controller variable. So stop button dot disabled is equal to true and controller is equal to null. Let's also make sure this is generate button, something we should have corrected in the previous video. Let's head to the browser and test this out. Stop button is disabled to begin with. Enter a prompt, 20 word sentence, click generate, and then stop. We have stopped the completion and the stop button is once again disabled. The generate button is enabled. This is how you stream OpenAI completions in JavaScript. Learning how to stream in JavaScript is fundamental to streaming completions in JavaScript libraries or frameworks like React, Next.js, Svelkit, and others. But I hope you now have the foundational knowledge to start creating your own AI-powered applications with JavaScript. If you want to support the channel, please leave a like and a comment as that goes a long way with the YouTube algorithm. Also, please make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content on AI and JavaScript.